Urban Rebel Designs in Aztec, New Mexico. And it's Friday, yay, it's almost the weekend. Um, when you jump on, say hello to me, please, and let me know what your plans are for the weekend. Today we're going to be working on this gorgeous Victorian music cabinet that I am going to turn into a lingerie chest. You may hear some voices in the background because I'm at the store this morning, so just ignore those. Um, this is some new old stock that I have in the store. These are the gorgeous, I've got to show you these, old, they're almost a gray black, silk stockings, and that's what I wanted to make this piece for. So I'm going to show you how it started out. Um, I haven't done the door yet. And when it came into the shop, it came in in pieces. So, oops, sorry about that. And I just scratched it. Um, came in in pieces, so it was like a jigsaw puzzle to put it back together. But this is the door. And you see it came in in a shiny black. So let me tell you what I did to get this started for us. I used one coat of boss and I only used one coat. I let it dry for a couple of hours and then I sprayed my base coat of buttercream and I'll jump up here and show you the colors that we're using today and this is going to be a really fun piece. Um, so my base coat was Dixie Belle's buttercream and I did spray it. I let it set overnight. If you're using a sprayer, please read the instructions. Use your viscosity cup until you're really, really comfortable with it to thin out your paint. And always, always, always strain your paint. Um, I'm going to set this stuff down here. For the inside, we're going to do a beautiful shade of green. And I mixed half kudzu and half farmhouse. And I came up with this gorgeous shade of green. You can see it is exactly in between. I did half and half with the farmhouse and the kudzu and I came up with this so that's what the inside is going to be and I'm also doing a stencil we're doing stripes on the side that I'll show you in just a second um, but I'm doing a stencil with the green and the soft pink over the top of the stripes and then of course we're going to use some grunge gray wax to bring out all of these beautiful details. Um, my stripes are going to be hurricane gray. So I'm going to flip this around really quick and show you what it's going to, what the stripes are going to look like. So see the variations in it? I'm going to show you how we do this really quickly and easily. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So I'm going to flip this around where I've already got my stripes on the other side tucked off. And so just to recap how I did the stripes, I always start my first stripe where there's a straight edge. And then I'll use a couple of pieces the width that I want my stripes as spacers to place the rest of them. So I have my blue painters tape on here and I'm just using an old store card and I'm going to burnish the edges just lightly and then we're going to get started. So if you're doing a stripe that you want a really clean edge on, I suggest putting your tape on. And then I do a coat of the base color. This will seal the edges so when we do the gray, um, if there is any bleed through, it's the base coat that's going to bleed through and you're never going to see it. So I, this is the buttercream that I mixed up for to spray the base coat so it's got a little bit of water in it. It's a little thin. Thanks, I love this piece too. When it came in, I knew exactly what I wanted to do to it. Hi, Billy. Um, so this is thinned with a little bit of water and I am just going to use one of my Dixie Bell brushes and I'm just gonna seal the edges. So I'll do this really quickly. 
So you can see. Can everybody see this okay? I have my husband here behind the camera. He's going to help me out if we have any issues hearing me or seeing the piece. I also taped off the top and this bottom ledge, which you can't see, just to make sure when I do my gray, if I have any oopses, I'm going to catch them. So I am just very quickly sealing the edges of this. And what we're going to do, normally if I want a really crisp stripe, I will let this dry before I go in with my second color, but I want the variegation or variation of the hurricane gray with buttercream. So I want to know what projects everybody's working on this weekend. And since I have to look at my piece while I'm getting this done because I want it to be really neat, then I'm gonna have to have Brian help me shout out what everybody's working on this weekend. And I'm really excited because I will be live with you every Friday, at least through the month of May, at this time. And what I hope to do is get you ready for your own fun projects for the weekend. So I have to tell you, now I'm using Hurricane Gray. I already had a 32 ounce open, so that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm going in with a flat angled brush and we're just gonna start the stripes. And you'll notice when we start them that I'm gonna get some of that buttercream mixed in. So it's sort of a blending technique and a stripe and sealing it all in one. Now I will do my stripes in shorter strokes, but I'm always going to finish off with one long stroke. This is a good tip on any piece that you're working on. You always want to finish off with one long stroke so you get a really good blend. And we're just going to keep working. Do we have any questions yet? Uh, Linda Duckworth is uh, working on a cupboard to store her paints. Oh, Linda, that's a great idea. I would love to see pictures of it when you get it finished. Billy says he's going to cut some wood. So Billy has Sinopoly. If you haven't seen the products from Sinopoly, they're wonderful. So we sort of always know what Billy's doing. He's always cutting wood. Check out their page, because he can make anything you want. We're gonna have to rename him Super Billy. So you can see how this is blending the buttercream and the gray, and it's given us some great variation in there. Always keep your Mr. Bottle handy. And if you feel like the buttercream has dried too much or you want your blending a little smoother, you can always spray your piece too. Just remember when you're injecting water into a water-based paint, you're going to thin it. And that quickly we have our stripes done. So I am going to attempt to pull the tape off. Karen Ortiz has two nightstands that she's going to paint. Hi Karen. Um, I'm actually doing a Victorian bed and two nightstands to go with this. So I will post pictures when I get all of it finished. Okay, I have a little blade around here somewhere. Let me try to use this card just to lift the edge up. I'm going up here under this ledge to lift the edge up. That way if I get any boo-boos, it's easy to go in and just fix it and you'll never see it. But I did a really good job burnishing the sides of this so it makes it a little more difficult to pull. 
I know a lot of people like to wait until their paint is dry. Hang on, let me grab this little screwdriver. Pardon me for stepping in front of the camera. Getting the little edges up is what's the most difficult. I like to pull it while the paint is still wet. So the hardest part of doing this whole project is going to be getting the paint, the tape off. I just need to get a little corner that I can grab hold of. And see by sealing those edges what a clean line we're getting there. scratched up so I can get hold of it. Sorry about this folks, but you can bet if it's going to happen, it will happen to me and it will happen on camera. Thank you. I'm going to use a little blade here just to pick that up. Maybe. There we go. So, for my people on the West Coast, good morning. Good Friday morning for my people on the East Coast. Good Friday afternoon. I have a kitchen class tomorrow that I am so excited about. I do a kitchen class once a month. See how gorgeous those lines are? And now let's go back to this one that wants to be difficult. We have several recommendations for frog tape. I like frog tape, but honestly, I have a worse time getting it off than I do this blue Home Depot brand painter's tape. So when all else fails, there we go. There always has to be one difficult one. So there we have our just stripes done and now I'm going to flip this around and we will do the stencil on the other side. I want to show you how easily the stencil goes on top of the painted stripes. Brandy Epperson wants to know what you put on the sides to get such a straight line. So Brandy, what I did was when I taped off my stripes, I started with this little edge right here and put my first piece of tape. And then I take just little short pieces of tape to use as spacers and I'll put them in different spots before I run my second piece of tape. And that's how I keep my lines straight. So now I want to do a stencil over the top of this side that has dried. So I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to use a couple of pieces of the painter's tape that I've already used. And I'm going to put my stencil on. Now I've already figured out my placement and I have put a little pencil mark on the inside of the ledge so you can't see it and a little pencil mark on my stencil. So I'm just going to line those up and make sure that it looks straight. This stencil, when I got it, was a square, and I knew that I wanted it to be more of a diamond shape on this, on the center. So I simply sized it up and cut two of the corners off so it would fit. 
Betty, this is an unusual piece. This is a Victorian music cabinet, and I'm turning it in to a lingerie chest. And I have, if you can see above the comments, I have this little leaf right here that's open-ended. I know that I want to cover that up because I don't want it to bleed out onto the side. So I'm just going to get a little piece of tape and I'm going to cover that one leaf. And I'm going to do the same thing because I've got another one on this side that's open-ended. So I'm going to cover it. And then we're going to see if I can really do what I have planned because I want the flower part of the roses to be soft pink and I want the stems and the leaves to be the green color. I'm calling it kudzu farm. It was half kudzu, half farmhouse green, um, but I want the stems and the leaves to be green. I'm not going to take the time to tape everything off. I'm just going to try to be careful when I do my stencil. If they blend a little bit, that's fine. We want that aged look. So I'm going to start with my soft pink and is that not the most gorgeous pink color you've ever seen and my plate is down here so if you've watched any of my videos at all you know that when i stencil i like to use a sponge so that's what we're going to do today so we're going to use a sea sponge and i'm just going to flip it end to end to switch between the pink and the green. So I need to dampen my sea sponge and I'm going to use my continuous mist sprayer. Andy said hello. Hello Andy. You inspire me. And I'm getting, where are we at? I'm getting just a little bit of paint on my sponge and I have a paper plate down here that I'm going to dab off most of the paint until I get it where it looks like this. And then we're just gonna go in and we're gonna stencil the roses. Like I said, if I get a little bit of pink in the leaves, that's fine. If I get a little bit of green on the roses, that's fine. That will just make it look a little more aged. And this will be a really subtle effect but I wanted this to be really fancy. When I get a new piece of furniture, it usually talks to me and tells me what it wants to be. This one screamed at me. And if you know me, you also know that I named my pieces. Her name is Callie. It gets a little comical in the store sometimes when I have somebody walk up and say, where's Ursula? Where's Lily? And they're talking about furniture. Anne from Missouri wants to know where you got the misting bottle. Anne, I sell the misting bottles here in the store. Um, most of the retailers sell them. I know that you can get them from like Sally's Beauty Supply. Um, I think you can get them on Amazon. That part I'm not real sure about, but I think you can. I want to say a restaurant supply, but that wouldn't be right. A restaurant supply is where I get my little plastic containers that I mix my paint in when I'm gonna spray. How many people spray Dixie Bell? How many people want to spray Dixie Bell? Hi, Ellen, I saw that. For once, I got to look up and see a comment. It is difficult to paint and watch comments. Okay, right here at the edge, I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm gonna be really careful not to go over the edge on this one. OK, 
Okay, I'm asking a lot of questions this morning. I'm curious by nature. So how many people paint for relaxation or fun? Let me move this out of the way before I spill it. And we're gonna switch to our kudzu farm. Kathy Hess wanted to know what color pink you were using. This is soft pink. Okay, somebody said they want a sprayer. Debbie, I highly, highly recommend a sprayer. There's a slight learning curve, but trust me, girl, if I can learn to use one, anybody can. So I've got the green on my sponge, and I'm going to dab it off as well. And we're going to go in and we're going to start on the leaves. I should say I'm also doing the inside of this and the shelving that goes in it in this beautiful green. And I know some of you will be shocked that I'm using neutral colors because I normally like a lot of color. But Miss Callie here said that she just wanted to be elegant and beautiful so that's what we're going for. We've had a couple of questions asking where the stencil is from. Okay, I have had this stencil for so many years. I'm going to say probably Hobby Lobby, but I can't be sure. Um, I've had it and used it so much, I don't really remember. We're almost finished with the leaves, and we can show you the finished product. And then I can show you how I'm going to use the grunge gray wax to do a little more shading and a little more aging, but in a very elegant way. Because she is a beautiful lady. Okay, my next question. Does anybody else talk to their furniture? Several people have expressed interest in using a sprayer and we've had one or two asking what kind that's a good question and I kind of giggle um, for big jobs I have an Earl X 5500 for smaller jobs I have the home right finish max I love them both I have also used, years ago before Wagner came out with the really good home decor sprayer, I've used a Wagner sprayer. Um, don't use one of the big Wagner sprayers that's made to paint the outside of your house. They don't work well on furniture. You can't get the detail that you need. If you have questions about using a sprayer, send me a message. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. I highly recommend spraying your base coats. It's quicker, you get a smoother finish. I love it. So I'm going to take the tape off, and hopefully it's going to come off well this time. And there we have our very subtle stencil on the side. Get rid of this. And because I'm not going to be putting wax on the center, I'm just going to use it to highlight and age a little bit around the corners, and then I'll use it on the detail to make it pop out. I'm not even going to wait for this to dry. I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and start. I do my wax a little differently than other people. A lot of people will do a coat of clear wax before they use Grunge Gray, which is my favorite wax. Um, but because Dixie Belle's wax is water-based, you can thin it with water. Um, so that's how I do it. I also find that when I thin it with water, it gives it a smoother finish. So I get a little bit on my brush, and then I dab it off on my lid. And you can tell my lid is well used. 
and I'll probably work straight from my lid from now on. And all I'm gonna do, and this is probably gonna come out a little heavy. So I'm gonna wipe a little bit off on my paper towel. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here and I'm just kind of drawing in my shape. Your shape does not have to be perfect. And I will end up going on down the side. So because Dixie Bell Wax is water-based, you can do this and it looks a little heavy. So I'm gonna put a little water on my paper towel that I'm gonna use to wipe it back. And just that easily, that part is gone. And so I'll wipe it back and soften it up. That also allows me to push the wax around where I want to use it. And basically what I'm doing is creating just a little frame. So here where it looks a little heavy, I can even spray directly on the wax. I wanna catch that drip. And just using my paper towel, I can wipe it back that way. So you can do it either way. You can either do a coat of clear wax first, which gives you a little more control over how dark or how heavy you make your wax, or you can thin it with water. And then I will just keep working this all around the cabinet. And I'm gonna come back and clean up this edge after I get it finished. But for now, I want to get just my waxing done. And to show you how it works up here on these details, we can do a little bit up there also. So I'm just going to put some right in here. And then I'm going to go in with my damp paper towel. You could probably use a baby wipe for this too. I haven't tried. I always just use a damp towel. you can see by doing that I'm leaving some in the crevice which is really making that detail pop out and I'm gonna go back and clean up this edge So there you go, I will finish this side, I'll stencil the other side, I'll get my details finished. We've still got to paint the door and we've got to paint the inside. Um, this beautiful green that I mixed up. If there's a spec, sorry, <laughs> got tongue tied. If there's a specific color that you're looking for and Dixie Belle doesn't have the exact shade that you want, don't be afraid to mix it. It's probably the easiest paint to mix colors that I've ever tried. Um, if you have any questions, post them here. I will try to go back and answer all of the questions. Oh, thank you, Betty. I was going for Victoria and I wanted to pay homage to her heritage. Um, I will go back and try to answer any questions. Don't forget, I will be back next Friday at this time to help you get ready for your weekend. Thanks for joining me. If you want to see the rest of this process, I will be hopping over to my page in just a few minutes to finish this up. I have some big announcements on my page that I'm really excited about. So if you're interested in seeing the rest of this process, hop over there, we'll finish it over there. But I don't want to keep you on here all day. Lynn, I mixed kudzu and farmhouse green. So I'm calling it Kudzu Farm. Which wax? The wax name, um, it's my favorite. It's Grunge Gray. The pink was soft pink. The stripes were Hurricane Gray. Um, 
when I sealed my stripes, when I sealed the paint, I used the base coat of buttercream and then immediately went back in to do my stripes and that's what gave us these variations in colors. Uh, yes? Question on your page name. My page name is Urban Rebel Designs. Thank you for asking. I hope everybody has a great weekend and don't forget to show me your weekend projects. You may be featured next Friday. Thanks for joining me. Have a great one. See you next week.